Hello everyone and welcome back to Walcott Fine Art. In today's video I am going to be comparing and contrasting a number of different lead whites that are on the market and again this video comes uh, as the request of one of my viewers. So this is certainly not comprehensive and nor is this demonstration intended to be a real scientific, it's not a scientifically calibrated experiment. Um, but just a basic look at some of the different lead whites uh, that are that I like, that I use, uh, that you can buy. So very quickly, let me just tell you what each one is. The first one here is Michael Harding's Stack Lead White. Now, Stack Lead White uh, means that this color was made the traditional way that they used to make lead white in the old days. So uh, Michael Harding takes sheets of lead and rolls them up and then suspends them in um, clay pots suspended over vinegar and actually buries them in manure. He actually does this. <laughs> uh, and then the vinegar fumes combine with the lead and they make the lead carbonate, which is what the pigment is. Um, and, and it's called stack lead white because of that way that they make it. So, and that's the traditional way. So because he does it this way, uh, this these tubes are very expensive. Uh, his more standard lead white, which is the next one, is the Michael Harding Kremnitz white. This next one here is Rublev's lead white number one, which is one of my favorite lead whites. Then next we have Rublev Venetian white, which is a lead white mixed with pigment white 22, which is barite. Then we have Utrecht flake white. Then the blocks flake white. And finally, at the very end, we have Windsor Newton Kremnitz white. Uh, now, I will say the Windsor Newton um, is probably my least favorite. I like I love Windsor & Newton products. They're great. But this particular one, because of the laws in the EU and stuff, this most Windsor & Newton colors are made in France. This one is made in China. Um, and the quality of it is not as good as it used to be uh, in the old days. And it's getting harder to find. So I don't really use the Windsor & Newton as much anymore. I like the Rublev. Anyway, so what I've done is out uh, here is I've squeezed out and I've tried to make these all the same as close as possible. Again, this is not a scientifically calibrated test. It's just for demonstration purposes. So um, this is Win uh, Winton, Windsor Newton Winton, which is their student grade line. This is cadmium red medium. So I'll just mix each one. So we'll take a look at the tinting strength and I'll show you some of the qualities of each one. So let's start with the stack lead white. And this is the Michael Harding. Now, one of the things you'll notice, um, and I'll sh you'll see this again in a couple of the others, is, and this is one of the qualities that lead white has, is that when I draw the knife through it, you see how it's kind of like ropey and stringy? I don't know if it's really showing up too well on the camera. But that's one of the qualities that lead white has because of the nature of the pigment that artists tend to like. And if you look at old fashioned, especially like Rembrandt paintings, um, you'll notice his highlights um, look stringy. And that's because he was using that lead white. And if you draw the brush across it, you know, in a particular direction, you get that kind of ropey look to it which is which can be used to an advantage for painting effects so you see how it it kind of has that ropey effect to it so okay so i'll try to get an equal amount of each white here for the mixing as as close as i can but again this is not it's not scientific it's just for demonstration purposes And lead white, you know, just naturally is less uh, powerful than titanium white. So your tints will always be, um, you won't have that real chalky 
tints that you get with titanium because the lead pigment is more translucent and a little bit less white. So, okay, so moving on to the Michael Kremnitz white. Now, this one is oilier. Um, and you can see when I manipulate it with the knife that it's a little creamier and it doesn't have that ropey consistency as much that the stack lead white had because that's the traditional way it was made. Uh, whereas the Kremnitz white is probably the industrial made lead white, which is made with a different method. Um, and it, so they don't use the thing with the vinegar pots and the manure and all that stuff. So I'll try to mix this up to see how it compares. So I can see, again, I know you can't see this on camera and I apologize for that. I do the best I can with the camera I have. But I can see after mixing it that this, the Michael Harding Kremnitz white is slightly warmer than the stack lead white. There's just a little bit more of a cooler tone to this one than there is to this one. So, so that's the difference coming through, obviously, in the in the white and the way the the light hits it because these are all the same color. So, okay, now moving on to the Rublev. Now this white is a little bit fluffier. I would I would say fluffier than the Michael Harding Kremnitz, and it's it's got a nice consistency to it because certain. Um, the one lead white that I, I don't have out here, but I did, I did try one time and I didn't care for it personally. That's just my opinion was the Williamsburg lead white or the flake white because it was really, really super stiff. And I, I was like, I mean, it was like trying to mix with spackle paste or something. It was just, it was too stiff for my taste. I didn't care for it. So, um, so I don't have any of that on hand, uh, but this is a very creamy, nice consistency. So let's see how that tints out with the cadmium. Uh, now you can see this is slightly more, um, you know, again, I'm trying to get these amounts approximately the same, but they're not exactly the same. Um, but you can see this has a little bit of a higher, this white has a little bit of a higher tinting strength than the Harding um, white. So, but but it's it's slight. It's very slight. Um, probably because Rublev tries to pack a lot of pigment into their paints. Now this Rublev Venetian white is an interesting white. Uh, I haven't really used it too much, but I bought it because I was curious. Um, and I don't know again if you can see, but it comes out of the tube slightly. Um, it's, it's kind of a slight off-white. Let me, let me show you something real quick. Now, what I've got here, this is just a sheet of plain, um, like copier paper. And copier paper is white, white. So, if I take a little bit of this Rublev Venetian white, and I put it on the paper... You can see that the white of the paint, there you go, is much darker actually than the copy paper. So this comes out of the tube a little bit of like a off-white color. It's like I maybe would call it a bone white. Uh, it's an interesting color. Uh, and it is a mixture, like I said, on it says on the tube of uh, something called barite, which is pigment white 22 and uh, lead carbonate, which is pigment white one. So let's see how this one, and this one's definitely stiffer. It's a little stickier. It has those kind of peaks that, that remain in the paint. Okay, 
Okay, so I can definitely see this one has a tint that's much more similar to the first one, the Michael Harding stock lead white. It's, it's a, just slightly cooler than these two. Uh, but, but it's a very clean tint, you know. It's, you're not getting that chalkiness that you can sometimes get from titanium white. And that's why artists like the flake white or the lead whites because they're less, less harsh. Um, okay, so moving on to the Utrecht flake white. Now this is, this is a nice, good sort of workhorse lead white. I, I do use it on occasion. Um, again, this is the commercially made pigment, so it doesn't have that, that ropey quality of the stack lead white. But it's a nice, clean, bright lead white. It's the whitest of all these, probably because it's got safflower oil in it. And so if I mix it, let's see. You can see that one does does have a little bit of a higher tinging strength, and I think that's not because there's more pigment in it. But I would uh, let's see, basic lead carbonate. So my proportions might have just been off. Anyway, so uh, mixing this in. It, it is, it's a little more chalky than the, um, there isn't any other pigment in it. It is a pure lead white, but it is slightly chalky um, uh, compared to these, uh, but not too bad. So, uh, so that's a nice sort of well-priced, you know, good quality lead white if you want to try lead white. And because some of them can be expensive, um, you know, because of the laws having to do with the pigments and they can't sell lead white in the EU anymore and all this kind of stuff. So, um, because they have to source them from more, you know, hard to get places, it's, they're more expensive. Um, so, and now the blocks flake white blocks is blocks makes great paints. Um, they're very expensive in general. Um, and this, this is probably the oiliest of all of them. And it's definitely, you know, softer. And so uh, so we'll see how this one tints out. Try to get the same amount there going. And again, this looks like it's a little bit of a cooler tint. Uh, the tint's on the cooler side. Now the... the um, Blocks, does this flake white? Let's see, what does it say here? Yeah, this is a pure, pure lead white. Cause occasionally the flake whites you'll see uh, will also contain some zinc. Um, occasionally you'll see that, so check the tube. Um, so far these are all, uh, except for the Venetian, uh, Rublev Venetian white, which has the barite in it, these are all single pigment lead whites. There's only lead carbonate in it. Um, and the same is true for the, uh, so I don't have any here that have um, the zinc added to them. So this one makes, yeah, this one makes a little bit of a cooler tint than some of these. And, uh, but the blocks flake white is the softest. It's, it's the most uh, consistency that's the, the most oily and soft. So, and last but not least, we come to the Windsor & Newton Kremnitz White, uh, which is a little stiffer than some of the others. Um, but it's, you know, a nice consistency, but it's more of like a standard oil paint consistency. It's definitely not the ropey lead white that the Venetian and the stack lead white has. So, uh, and again, like I said, this is you know, will work in a pinch, but it's not my favorite because I feel like the quality of it is not as good as it used to be um, because they moved their manufacturing to China, probably because of the, the EU laws. So, so, and I'm seeing again, as with the Utrecht 
lead white. It's just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit chalky um, compared to some of the other. It's not, you know, real bad, but it's just a tiny bit compared to some of the other uh, more expensive uh, lead whites. Um, personally, all my favorite out of all of them is the Rublev lead white number one. Um, but uh, the blocks, the blocks flake white is also pretty nice. I like that one a lot too. Um, but these are all good quality paints, so you can't really go wrong with any of them. Uh, it's just that some, like the Michael Harding stack lead white and the Rublev lights, will be more expensive than the than the, like the Windsor Newton or the Utrecht. So uh, if you're just starting out and you've never used a flake white before and you want to try it, I'd recommend either the Utrecht or the Windsor Newton Kremnitz. Um, but if you want to dive in and spend the money, then go with the Rublev or the Michael Harding, uh, one of the Michael Harding lead whites, and because you can't go wrong with those. So anyway, I hope that you found this video useful and informative, and it will help you make decisions the next time you go to buy lead white. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time!